Hi everyone, welcome back. It's really good to see you again. So I'm here at Prestonfield House, one of my favourite hotels just outside of Edinburgh, and I'm having tea. And I thought that I would invite you to join me as I enjoy this special occasion. And also I'm going to give you a few conversation starters, so that if you're looking to attend a dinner party or even an afternoon tea, you've got a few topics that you can discuss which will make the event even more fun. So I'm going to offer you these conversation starters and I'm going to answer them myself and I thought that this would be a fun thing for us to do today. I think the best afternoon tea I've ever had, which was actually my first afternoon tea, so maybe that's why it's so special, was when I went to Paris in 2012. It was Valentine's Day, so Valentine's Day is just around the corner. It's a very special memory. And I went to the Ritz for afternoon tea and it was truly incredible. I think the experience of having afternoon tea is such a special one. And in a place like the Ritz, which is obviously very grand and beautiful, it really enhances that experience. And I just remember being so in awe of this beautiful cake stand with sandwiches, scones, cakes, and then having your tea. It was a very special occasion. And I think it really cemented my love for tea and why I want to share it with the world now. So when I went to the Ritz for afternoon tea, it was before the renovation. And it has been renovated since, and I've been back, and I can say that it is still a great experience, and one that I would definitely like to do again very soon. I think the best place I've ever visited is Capri in Italy. I went there about four years ago in the summertime. Actually, it was just before summertime, kind of like May, so late spring. And I just remember you have to get there by boat or by helicopter, which is quite a special occasion. So I got there by boat and I remember the boat arriving at the harbour and just being enchanted by this very magical place. You're instantly greeted by this wonderful aroma of flowers that just wafts through the air. And then the, it's like going back in time. There's little fish markets and the mountains are just so charming with the little houses inside of them. And it was just like, yeah, stepping back in time and entering another world. I was there for two weeks and during that whole time it was like being away from the rest of the world in this moment of peace and calm and I just had the most wonderful time. So with Capri there's not really that much to do on the island, you kind of just have to enjoy being in the gorgeous sunshine, uh, seeing the beautiful scenery and also there's some incredible places to eat and they can be very humble restaurants or quite posh and fancy ones and I really enjoy being able to explore both of them. But yes, Italy is one of my favourite destinations but probably Capri is the best place that I've ever been to. <laughs> I think my teenage years were quite experimental for me in terms of style. I was just beginning to realise who I was and in that process you definitely go through a few changes and try some new things. And for me, I really enjoyed fashion. I enjoyed trying new clothes and expressing myself with clothes. So I definitely did that a lot. So I'm not sure whether you were around in the 2005, 2006 era when I was in my teens, but if you were, you will know that the style was quite casual, had a bit of a Hollywood influence of denim and t-shirts, even things like flip-flops. There were shows like The Hills and uh, The O.C. which people were influenced by that very Californian look and that was one of the things that I really liked and tried to recreate. There's a photograph of me and I'm wearing a white t-shirt, v-neck which is quite low, some denim jeans which have flared and I've just got this bright blonde dyed hair which is quite long and orange tan. Not very Nicholas Fairford. Afternoon tea, you always start at the bottom of the tier with the sandwiches and this is probably my favourite one, egg and cress. It's very simple to make, I've made it a few times on my channel. It's just basically boiling eggs and you mix it with um, parsley and mayonnaise. Simple but very good. I always like to cut my sandwiches in half with a knife and then have a little bite. Mm -mm.
So I think my perfect weekend would be a very relaxed one. In the week I'm typically busy, so at the weekend I want to relax. That would start with probably having a little bit of a lay-in, not too late because I don't like to lay in bed all morning, but probably till like 8 or 9 a.m. In the week I usually get up out of my bed to the gym, so to have a little bit of a rest would be quite nice. Maybe have some tea in bed with someone special where we can just chat, watch some television, maybe read a paper or a magazine, just resting. Then I'd like to go for a little walk in our garden with Sophie, who would quite enjoy that probably. Then in the afternoon I'd like to do something, see something beautiful. So maybe go to a gallery or a museum. In Edinburgh we've got the portrait gallery, which is one of my favourites. I always like to go and look at the portraits there. Probably after that I'd like to go to a nice wine bar for a glass of champagne or something delicious so that we can just relax even further and take the day slowly. And then probably in the late afternoon, evening, I'd want to go home, light a fire, have some wine and cheese, some nibbles and food, maybe cook a dinner and put on a good film and just relax. That would be a pretty perfect weekend for me. So after you've eaten your savoury sandwiches, you get to start on the scones. And these are one of my favourite things. Even if I'm not having a full afternoon tea, I like to have scones with tea. And a good scone, you should be able to just break it in half. You can see how it's got this little rim. You don't need to use a knife, you can just break that and that is fine. And then you can just take some jam and cream. I prefer just jam, to be honest. Sophie likes scones too. Take some jam, put it on with your spoon. Perfect. Mm. So this is a good question to ask at a dinner party because it's kind of a fun one. If, if the mood's getting a little bit serious, then this one kind of livens things up. For me, my celebrity crush changes from time to time. So I'll tell you my current celebrity crush. And this is a really handsome guy that I started following on Instagram and he's called Lorenzo Viotti. And he is a famous conductor. He's the head of the orchestra in Amsterdam. And he's just my very ideal type. Someone who's tall, dark, very handsome, and also extremely talented. I appreciate a guy who has talent or something that he's good at. And obviously he is very musical. I enjoy classical music, so he is my ultimate celebrity crush and I would definitely check him out on Instagram if you like to look at a bit of eye candy. So this was a difficult question to answer because I don't really have anything that I'm totally obsessed with at the minute. I know that it might, you might be thinking of a TV show or something that I'm obsessed with, but I'm not really watching anything at the minute. But I think I'm obsessed with, a little bit, the new Princess of Wales, Kate Middleton, as she's otherwise known. And I've loved her since, since I was about 15, when I first started to know who she was. And then when she got married to Prince William, I was obsessed about the wedding. So she's always been someone who I've really admired. I think she's beautiful, intelligent, kind. And I'm just very impressed with the way that she has entered the royal family and just got on with the job. And no matter what criticisms come her way, she just carries on like a swan and gets, gets it done. For me, that is someone who is very admirable. So what I really admire about her is that she's very focused on one topic. I think she decided early on to focus on the early years and how important it is to give a, ch a child the best start in life and that will influence the rest of their life. It's, this is not really a topic that's very glamorous or something that is particularly fun. It can be probably very hard and difficult to talk about the first five years of a child's life. But I think it's gonna make a positive impact for a lot of people and that is what I like. So I'm a bit obsessed with the Princess of Wales. So after the scones, you get to the very final tier, which is the cakes and the pastries. And after you've eaten all of this food, you kind of look at that and even though it looks very delicious, it can be a little bit overwhelming and like, do I really want to eat all of this? And then you remember that this is a special occasion and it's okay to indulge and enjoy yourself a little bit. These do really look delicious. I hope you're enjoying this little feature of 
dinner party conversations. And I think one of the things that is most important to remember is that when you're conversing with someone at a party or a dinner or something like that, is to just take a real interest in what they're saying. A lot of people ask me for advice about the correct etiquette at a party, what should you say, what, sh what should you not say, and how can you have a great conversation. And I always say that just being really properly interested in someone is going to make you have the best conversation ever. Because if you're listening to what they're saying, asking more questions on their replies, then that shows you're interested and makes them feel very valuable. So that is my number one piece of advice. Just be interested in not only the people around you, but also the world. I think the most famous person I've ever met is probably David and Victoria Beckham. And it was when I lived in the Cotswolds and there's a beautiful garden centre there called Burford Garden. And it's kind of not like your typical garden centre. It's very elegant and there's a lot of beautiful things. So it's kind of a tourist attraction in the area. And I used to go there a few times a month just to have lunch and just to have a look around to be inspired. And the Beckhams have a country house in the Cotswolds. And one day I was just there and I first noticed David walk past. He's very tall, much taller than I was expecting. He was dressed very casually in a hat and wellies. And then I saw Victoria Beckham, who I quite like. I always wanted to be Posh Spice when I was younger. You know how everybody was obsessed with the Spice Girls and always had one that they liked? Victoria Beckham was my favourite, so I was really happy to see her. She's tiny in real life, much smaller than I was expecting, and equally as glamorous. So I think, yeah, those two... It was one of those times where you're a little bit shocked to see someone, especially in a very simple place like a garden centre. So I think, yeah, those are the two most famous people I've ever seen. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Hopefully this has been useful for you if you've been looking for some good conversation starters for your next party or event. I have written a blog post about this subject, so that if you want to check it out and note down the questions or copy them, you can for future reference. Just check out my blog, nicholasfairford.com. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It always helps for new people to discover these videos and enjoy them just as you are. So please do that. That would be very, very helpful. I look forward to seeing you next time. But until then, take care. Bye-bye.